Uh, this is our next match. Uh, it's going to be STIE Olympians Don Argus against Happy Feet Empress Hapon. So this is STIE Olympians Don Argus. We know him as an Eliza and Heihachime. And his Eliza is probably the top Eliza in the country. Uh, he has made it deep into other local tournaments with this character. But then he has that pocket Mishima. He has that pocket Heihachi who pulls him out of trouble when he needs him. Mm, uh, definitely a good combination of characters considering that Eliza isn't exactly who you'd call a very conventional Tekken character. He, mm. She has more of a 2D game, uh, 2D style gameplay, which is... Uh, even though she is essential, uh, she is an original Tekken Seven character. He has a win-loss record of twenty-four to forty-three and a win rate of thirty-six percent. Uh, but you know, uh, he he only appeared in the first conference of the first season. Uh, he had to watch from the sidelines in the second season, and all the way until now, he's been waiting for another chance. So I'm excited to see how well he's going to perform this time. He definitely has some new tricks up his sleeve. Uh, and he wants, you know, to perform way better. He did great in the first conference, but as a pro player, you know, you have to be hungry. And I think that hunger is going to show in this match. We talked about Elisa, who is not a conventional Tekken character. Um, she has what we call uh, a meter, where whenever she uh, hits or gets hit, she builds up that meter to give her more options. And I'm looking to see that come into play in this match. Mm. Also, oh, one of the few characters who has projectiles in this game. Mm, so yes. if uh, this uh, this uh, this iteration of Tekken Seven actually has characters that have projectiles, we have Geese, we have Akuma, and for the original Tekken lineup, we have Eliza. So uh, for players who are not quite used to it, uh, they might find. Facing those types of characters very confusing because they do adapt a more 2D style uh, gameplay. Uh, you have to, as you mentioned, Jimmy, they they have to mind the meter at the bottom of the screen because uh, their moves get completely different properties whenever they make use. And going to, back to what you said about dealing with projectile characters, I've been able to witness that uh, as. I was able to travel to different cities for the nationals before the first season and it did come into play some people are not yet familiar with how to deal with projectiles i think the first projectile character ever in tekken who is no longer in tekken 7 but that was gone from tekken 3. uh <laughs> it was quite challenging to deal with but i'm happy to see about the players now you know they got used to it it's been so many years since the game has come out and it's only gotten better um, and of course, uh, Argus is going to be facing someone with quite the, the repertoire, quite the experience. And it's going to be against Hapon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hapon, of course, no stranger to projectile characters. Uh, I, I think the experience, the knowledge about, uh, the knowledge and know-how about how to deal with Eliza actually comes with the territory. It depends on whether or not there are players who are proficient with their character. So it's about gaining experience and Hapon. He has the experience and he has the knowledge. He has, he has also used different uh, uh, projectile characters before uh, in in other events as well. Dabbled in those characters, as you may say. Uh, so it's interesting. These Here are the players, of course, STIE Olympians, Don Argus, looking very serious this time around, wanting to improve his win rate, of course, from the previous conference. He is a man on a mission. Um... And I'm looking to see what he brings to the table. But looking at the match, let's say they play their mains. Let's say, you know, Don Argus goes with Eliza and Hapon stays with his tried and true. <laughs> uh, Eddie, how do you think that matchup goes? Uh, it's interesting because Eliza has ways to engage, uh, to uh, move in on the opponent. But uh, range wise, I wouldn't say she has the best kit. Now, Hapon, if he makes a full use of his movement, should be able to stay out of range of Eliza. And one thing that actually jumps into mind is people would think, hey, it's a projectile, maybe he can just lie down under it. But no, uh, Eliza's projectiles actually <laughs> run on the ground. So uh, <laughs> that might not be the best idea. But of course, Hapon knows that and he will have other strategies to deal with this 2D style character. I think Hapon is one of the players and one of the top any players in the country and I'm sure he has the movement there to deal with it um, and it's gonna come down to you know the brawling who can get in 
who can find their who can who who makes the least mistakes because i think when it comes to these high level games if you can punish your opponent for making a mistake and run with the momentum that you get from it uh, that can definitely help you win a bunch of games that is the name of the game right there making sure that you make very little mistakes and capitalizing on the mistakes that your enemy does make uh, uh and uh, you mentioned movement here because uh Tekken, to its core, relies very heavily on its fundamentals. It's a three-dimensional game, so there's a lot of freedom for the characters to move around, um, which makes for some very interesting situations. Uh, we are definitely going to be seeing plenty of that here in this matchup, uh, especially with such seasoned uh, players uh, coming in between us. And uh, we mentioned earlier as well that they have never fought each other officially <laughs> here yes. in the Nationals. Uh, so maybe there will be some uh, that would impact their mentality coming into this match uh especially with both of these players uh, they're they're familiar they're in the nationals uh, they have nationals experience so they know who has been playing and they've watched the matches but watching is completely different from actually fighting against the other players so uh i, I hope they're prepared for this matchup no way to, to disagree with you on that. I think the only experience that they have with each other is probably offline experiences, but we talked about it during the pre-show that the online experience is totally different uh, from offline in any game. And there might be some tricks that are to be had. Uh, some players might be a little more uh, not safe online, right? So I... <laughs> This is going to play a huge factor in this matchup. I definitely like that you brought that up, especially with an Eddie Gordo. Playing an Eddie Gordo <laughs> online, ooh, that might be a bit of a nightmare. Not to mention that Don Argus's Eliza actually demands quite ah. a bit of execution. So mm. an execution-heavy character on an online environment is uh, a daring choice, basically. But it, it seems that Happy Feet Emperor's Hapon uh, does not go for the Eddie Gordo and instead repicks Leroy Smith. I think this is the character that he's looking to bring out more this season. Um, from for, for, trying to think of it from his perspective, you know, this is day one, the perfect day to test the waters. Let's see how this new character of mine does, um, and probably how Hapon performs today will determine his character picks for the rest of the season. He definitely okay. wants to uh, bounce back from his previous loss. So now here oh. we go. <laughs> right, Don Argus coming out swinging, but Hapon finds a counter hit here. Uh, and he's going to start off with a huge life lead and the wall. Oh, now he, but, but now uh, Don Argus uh, definitely wants to escape this corner. Trying to fight out of it, but Hapon doing a great job keeping him there. Uh, blocking all that needs to be blocked, except for that one right there. The counter hit low, Don Argus. Uh, good. The meter. Very good choice. And now that dive kick into that jab DP. Uh, Don Argus uh, thinking, uh, thinking on his toes on how to escape the pressure that Hapon is trying to uh, lock him in. And Don Argus now starting off really nice with that combo. To the round and an EX Dragon Punch there. That is the uppercut that's invincible. And that has gotten them, gotten him to this huge life advantage and the round. Wow, what a risk there from Don Argus. A wise choice actually going for that wall bounce. It does do a lot of pushback. So even if it is blocked, uh, it's it's of no particular consequence. It's one of the moves that Elisa uh, definitely wants to use when exerting pressure right next to the wall. Don Argus starting really dominant again, going straight to the wall and the mix-up there on the wake up is going to work in his favor, uh, but Hapon fighting back. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an opportunity from Don Argus, makes a full use of it. Last chance here, goes for the projectile. Oh, oh Hapon is fighting back though. He definitely has a chance here, but the rage drive gets snuffed by the dive kick. Hmm, this Leroy pick looking a little questionable for upon as much as you know i trust his judgment that was a dominant first game from don argus it certainly it certainly is it was a bit shaky for him at the first because uh in the early rounds hapon did have the momentum uh we we thought that don argus was getting smothered but uh i don argus uh, kept his calm 
found a way out, uh, found a, some holes in the offense that Hapon was uh, dispensing and made full use and just played his regular brand of Eliza here in this game. Uh, and after that, as you mentioned, Dr. Jimmy, it's three straight losses already with Hapon on that Leroy Smith. So perhaps it is time to make that switch, but I wonder if he will. And going back to the first round, I think the turning point really was when Don Argus got that counter hit uh, sweep. And that eventually led to the round as he performed an amazing combo to take it. And that that's what we talked about, right? Finding the mistakes or finding your opportunities and taking full advantage of them. And I think that's exactly what Don Argus did to get this first game. Mm, just capitalizing on that counter hit sweep. And, you know, every time that Eliza does manage to land a hit or a manage to start a combo, she is a monster when it comes to carrying them all the way to the wall. Immediately in the flash of an eye, we saw Hapon right there in the corner. And now it, here is the new pick from Happy Feet Emperor's oh. Hapon. He does bring out the Geese Howard. So this is two 2D style characters with their own projectiles going toe to toe this time around. Geese is has been a popular pick, you know. Last season, uh, we did see a couple of big international tournaments taken with Geese. So let's see how Hapon does it here. Two D characters starting off the second game. Let's see if Hapon can take one back. Yes, uh, both both players just going at it right from the get go. Not really, not really backing away from each other. There are no really big combos from both players. Hapon has really been winning this whole round with the folks using Geese's good normals here. Uh, <laughs> we're seeing a fireball war, which isn't often seen in Tekken 7. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Just clashes in the middle of the screen, and now Hapon with that rising one uh, punish. Very nice work. He is now, uh, he now, he has some decent momentum now, but Don Argus with that hit. Right, Hapon did really anticipate he would. Uh, Don Argus would go through with that follow-up move. Uh, and now he is up against the wall with half his life again. I think this is some of that online strategies that we were talking about, Poru. Even in the previous conference, <laughs> we know that Don Argus is the type who will spend that meter when he does have it. He will steal your turn. You think it's your turn? Not quite. And now he just steals a round as well from Happy Feet Emperor's Hapon. And Argus was really banking on, you know, the high-low mix-up there. Uh, with Eliza, and here we go using that EX move. First move that we've seen today that does give her the, the, the screw combo. But Hapon now breaking the breaking the ledge. Now we go to the bottom floor. That is a missed opportunity from Hapon missing the combo. He does spend the meter, uh, make, making full use of the resources that he currently has. But he still has one, so better watch out. He's really a more dangerous character when he has that one meter. And here we go. He might be able to take the run with this combo. He does break the wall and he does great combo confirm from Hapon. Very nice work. He is working for that first win in today's matches. Uh, oh, there it is again. <laughs> Just steals the turn with that EX uh, uh, dive. Uh, no, EX Dragon Punch. That is one of the factors that you have to consider when you're going against Eliza. And with that wake up or again, two counter hits here for Don Argus and it's going to cost Hapon almost his entire life bar. Too far from the wall for anything, but the mix-up afterwards closes it out for Don Argus. Yes, if you're not careful when you're going up against this Eliza, she will catch you with some serious damage. But that was a little bit too ambitious from Don Argus going for that uh, very slow but big low. He's been going for that move quite a lot in this second game. And he hasn't really been discouraged, but here comes Hapon though. A huge life lead here catches him, trying to do something. Ooh. Goes for the mix-up. Oh my goodness! Here comes Don Argus for her. Very smart cross up from Don Argus, right? For the trick! Oh! Speaking of tricks, there's the unblockable! And Hapon is in the red. Oh, oh no. Oh. Big catch here. Can Hapon close it out with this rage drive? It, yes, it's going to be enough. No, not No, quite. sir, it's not! Oh, I take it back! But the uh, projectile on the wake up to close it out. That was a really crucial catch there at the end. Uh, from Hapon. Yeah, uh, he knew uh, Don Argus was, uh, he had the momentum after those, uh, the cross up at the end, where he jumped over to the other side of, the, of Hapon and caught him uh, from the back. That was a very dangerous situation. And then he followed it up 
with that surprising unblockable as well that uh, those kinds of strategy bold strategies if they work on you it can have an effect on your mental state talagang pag-iisipan mo uh, whether or not it's going to happen again so that catch at the end with that jab out of the air it was uh it it was a blessing for sure para uh, for hapon and you know the seeds have been sown for the mind games for Don Argus. Even though he lost game number two, he's definitely going to have Hapon thinking, okay, is he going to do it again? And that'll definitely open up more options for him because Don Argus has been taking a lot of risks uh, in that second game and it almost paid off. Like he brought, you mentioned the, the mix up there on Wake Up by jumping to the back. That was the perfect time to bring it out. And he needed to do something to make the comeback because he was down. Unfortunately, though, Hapon was able to keep it together and he takes game number two. Just capitalizing on uh, the opportunity that was given to him. Uh, now, uh, while Don Argus does have a Heihachi pick, he, it is, there's no question that his main choice, uh, main weapon of choice will always be Elisa. But we, will we be seeing a switch? Oh. I, 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 I predict no. I predict no. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 2D versus 2D still, and we're moving, of course, to the arena, uh, a smaller stage this time around, although it, Jungle Outpost was pretty small, but when you go downstairs, it turns into a huge one, but the arena is more of a straightforward stage, uh, and both of these characters will definitely be able to uh, capitalize on their wall carries this time around. Two characters that really depend on their meters. Uh... And Giza's meter has actually been nerfed from last season, uh, but still he is a really strong character. Uh, would you say he's still? I would say he's still top tier. He, considering the damage that he can do, especially uh, when they changed it up so, such that he can deal serious damage in the open as well, when they gave him a standalone screw, I think he only got stronger, but he did, uh, he does have to work a lot harder this time around to gain that meter that he so sorely needs. And Argus are starting off with that EX dive kick, but Hapon not phase. He finds a big counter hit here, going to get the combo into the corner. Mix up here on Wake Up, gets blocked, catches the jump! Very nice work, and uh, Don Argus has to make his way out of this crushing situation that Hapon has put him in. And he has done this before, uh, but I don't think Hapon's going to let that happen. This game goes for the low to close it out. And now Hapon on match point. What a huge turnaround, Poro. A very fast series of matches from Hapon, and Don Argus has yet to make a, a very uh, noticeable mark here in this match. But now the moment uh, it seems that he's going for a more aggressive approach, just throwing it all out there. Right, he is laying everything on the line as we normally say. Um, but Hapon is not phased here, going to that backdash oh. to get the best combo possible. Spends that meter, going to have a huge life lead. Argus, can he make this comeback? Try to go for that oh. once again, but no! Hapon with the read and the punish, just finishing it off real quick, takes the game over. STI Eolipin says Don Argus. So, good job to him. Congratulations to Happy Feet Empress Hapon. Uh, getting himself a win now for this first day of the Tekken Conference.